welcome to Mixed Combat Radio. It is Matt and JP here today to sort of just break down some topics, and they're not really any specific topics. We just wanted to do a little extra show here, and basically the idea of the show stemmed from us watching Bellator 170 last week, Trail Sunday vs. Tito Ortiz, and I really wanted to do the show again, the, this topic that we were talking about after the show that we never ended up doing. Um, I wanted to do it again because uh, I was watching Bellator tonight, and it just sort of reminded me of, you know, damn, JP brought up some great points. And, you know, as an outsider of MMA, you know, you, you, you were bringing up great things about just the idea of the low-level regional scene of MMA compared to the high level, and then also compared to boxing, you know, so, you know, what, what were you thinking as just a, a person really seeing for the first time, as you said, the the lower level of MMA? Um, for me, my parents watching uh, MMA or UFC, what have you. You sound um, really bad right yeah. now, JP. Yeah. You sound so bad. Come back to us. Is this any better for you? Yeah. You know, you hear? Yeah, you sound better. You're not breaking up. You're not breaking up. Ooh, man, you sound so bad. I'm going to hang up and call you back, okay? Let me, um, let me, let me bust the move up here. All right, hold on. Okay, yeah, we're back. Sorry about the technical difficulties. JP, I, I know you heard the question, so you can just go on with the answer. We did not hear any of it. Uh, yeah, my experience with watching UFC or MMA has been, you know, every now and then as an extremely casual, I'll get caught up in the big fights. Like recently, I bought the Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz fight, the part two. And, you know, I got, uh, I wanted to, I seen the Rashad Evans, uh, Rampage and a few others here and there over the years. So I, I get, get caught up, you know, like any other casual fight fan, I'd say. But um, watching the Bellator 170, that was a first for me in the regard of uh, watching guys who aren't big stars, you know, and with that big star comes good skill. And I mean big stars, not they're not elite. You know, they're not top 10. They're not top 15 in their division. You know, that's something I think that's very new to you for MMA. It was, I, I, I it kind of dawned on me that this isn't like uh, sweet science. Like it's, it has a lot of, it's brutal in some aspects. You know, guys getting knocked out with flying knees to the temple. You know, when you see a knockout like that, you understand that that guy may not ever be the same again. It isn't a, it isn't a boxing knockout. It's a lot more brutal. Um, the difference in the gloves, there's no sweet sound of the air coming out from the glove. There's like, you know, guys are getting busted up within a few shots because this is knuckles, basically. And um, overall, man, I just, it, 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 I came to the realization that this is a really brutal sport and these guys are really tough. And it's not glitz and glamour like you have in boxing. This is really low-level stuff. These guys aren't probably being paid $2,500 to fight at this level and go back to the gym and sweat hard and really dedicate to a craft where they may never make $10,000 for a fight, many of them. So, you know, that was what I took from it. And the idea that it was, like, really brutal, I really want to get into that because, you know, you've talked about it with me personally, like, you know, when we were just hanging out how there's just more blood in MMA and how for like casual, especially for like boxing like fans, that's a turnoff. And I think that's so interesting because uh, the idea that like for boxing fans, the brutality of MMA is too much. And I just think that that whole concept, that idea is just intriguing. It, it's real. Like it, there's obviously a percentage of boxing fans that think that way. And I, I really want to get at the heart of that. You know, why do you think that boxing fans view, specifically boxing fans, not just sports fans, boxing fans, think that MMA is too brutal? And I want, and I want to use those words specifically, too brutal. Because I think for some boxing fans, 
it is a turnoff. Because, you know, I remember people saying, like, you know, I'll watch boxing, but the idea that, you know, if a guy gets knocked down, you keep hitting him is just too much for me. Or, that, you know, you can kick guys, you know, you can knee him and elbow them. Like, that's too much for me. You know, I've heard that before from boxing fans. And I just think that's – it's, it's interesting. You know, what do you think of that? Yeah, I, I totally agree. You know, in boxing, we see a, a case like Pritchard Cologne, and that's a circumstance that's few and far between. You may go hundreds – to maybe even thousands of fights before you see, um, you know, and this is just me throwing out numbers, but you go a lot of fights before you see a case where that happens in boxing. In MMA, I dare to say, you know, you got a lot of these underground fight things going on all across the country. I'm, I, I'd say every, I go, on, I go on a limb and say every hundred fights, somebody's life is being changed. You know what I mean, and that, and with those those type of numbers, man, that is scary. No, no, very you know? quickly, very quickly, because you know you you obviously throwing out numbers here. I just want like maybe give some factual stuff in there, you know, like yeah. In, in, ter- in terms of boxing, you know, because obviously we hear more about the high level stuff, right? We don't hear about yeah. like underground stuff. We never hear about that. We, we there's a reason why we don't it's underground. Um, but in terms of stuff that's televised, you know, we had the Percy Cologne case. Yeah. We had Nick Blackwell. And yep. we had Mike Tao. Mike Tao actually died this year. That's all in major boxing that was televised. Mm-hmm. Uh, for MMA, not just UFC, MMA, uh, as far as I know, we've had no one die, period, on televised MMA in the last, as, as in the history of MMA. Um, and then in terms of like stuff like Pritchard Cologne and Nick Blackwell, that, as far as I know, on high level stuff like Bellator, UFC, One uh, FC, Ryzen, all these other promotions, these big time promotions, MMA, you know, that I've never heard of a case that hap- that's happened like that. And the only cases I hear, especially in MMA, of fighters dying or fighters, uh, you know, lives really getting changed, and it's due to actually the weight cutting. Uh, I remember whew, it was maybe like a year or two ago. We had this huge string of people dying in Brazil due to weight cuts. We had like five or six people all due to weight cuts. Uh, cut too much weight, passed out, didn't wake up. Um, so that we, so we've seen weight cutting be changed a lot in MMA as a whole. Uh, weight cutting is now at a different time uh, because of that in in the states, just because of what happened in Brazil. Um, so just you know, it's funny because like it, when you talk about the brutality of the sport. You know, we don't see it in actual, like, death or comas like we do in boxing. Well, I, I figure that's worth a fact check. You know, I mean, a quick Google will take care of that. But um, <clears throat> I, I venture to say the kid uh, who lost to uh, Daly with the flying knee kick, you know, who knows if that guy ever be the same again, man. And that's just a typical night. That happens all the time. Yeah, but you then we have I'm... guys like uh, like Robbie Lawler, who was knocked out viciously by Nick Diaz back in 2002, 2003. And then he went on to be a UFC champion a decade later. You know, like... Uh, or like uh, Michael Bisping got knocked out brutally by Dan Henderson and at UFC 100. And uh, he and then Dan, uh, Dan Henderson came in with a flying elbow on the ground as Michael Bisping is out cold already. That was brutal. You know, yeah. Michael Bisbee yeah. went on to be a UFC champion. You know, it's just I'm not saying that the 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 visuals of it it, it are that is not brutal because I think you're completely right. Flying knees, um, kicks, elbows. You know, those all equate to me more brutality from a visceral sense. But on a high level, we don't have the actual result of it being more brutal than boxing. I would well, say. Well, if we're talking about something like the deterioration of the brain or uh, damage. This is something most times like CTE. Yeah. That, that that, 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 now that's something different. Cause we, we won't know that until another what, 20 years or something like that. Exactly. So you know? this is a, a circumstance where we're talking about damage over time and erosion per se. But I just think it's clear, you know, in boxing, when we, when we ever get a one punch knockout, you know, like we had with, well, we didn't even get it with Charlo, but you know, when we get those one punch knockout, it's spectacular. These things are most times considered knockout of the year in most circumstances because they're few far between, but on any given night and any given ring in any Northern California 
freaking high school gym, somebody's getting dropped with a spinning elbow, a fucking flying knee to the fucking chin. And dude, it's just, to me, it's obvious that the knockouts are far more brutal. They're far more damaging and they're for far less profit. You know, it's, 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 it's a different level of professionalism. You know what I mean? It's a, a boxer has a craft. It's it's a, and I'm not saying that MMA at that level is not a craft. It is a craft. It's a skill, but uh, it just feels like it needs to be. Um, boxing feels more officiated. It feels more. It's safer. The gloves are safer. You know. I just feel like it's a safer thing, now, especially. No, it's funny you bring up the gloves. Hold on, very fast. Um, I remember they actually tested this out in like pounds per square inch. You know, the the actual force of a punch, and they put uh, Chuck Liddell. Yeah, I know. I think you know who Chuck Liddell is, right? Yeah. Uh, they gave him a boxing glove, and then they gave him an MMA glove, and then they gave him just bare knuckles, and they uh, tested it. Uh, and actually, I think the 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 room for difference between a boxing glove and an MMA glove was like maybe like 10 pounds per square inch. You know, it was at like 740 and one was at like 750 between the gloves. Okay. And then bare fisted was at like 1200 or something like that. Some absurd number. So the physics behind the gloves, I, I think don't produce more uh, force. I think it just provides less uh protection for the hands in my personal opinion uh, i think guys break their hands more in, in mma due to the gloves being so thin i know i now obviously like that that's a that's one piece of data i can point in saying there's marginal difference between the gloves but then again i've been hit with mma gloves i've been hit with boxing gloves and there is a difference it feels different it does um, i would i'd assume so how many ounces are mma gloves four ounces so that's you know a third near a third the size of a ten ounce glove. Yep. So of course you know what I mean. That's I think that's pretty clear. Speaks for itself. But then that's not equating, you know, elbows. Yeah, freaking, like that's something completely different. A freaking, or kicks. A fucking knee. You know what I mean? That's absurd, dude. I mean, how do you think? I, I'm thinking. I'm looking at the guy like, man, that must really like hurt. It, <laughs> it has to shock your brain. It has to jar your brain like crazy. You know what I mean? Now, do you think there... This is kind of a weird question. Like, Follow me here. Do you think that there is ever a time when the brutality of MMA is ignored? Similar to like the brutality of football. Like, the, like Football is a brutal sport, but we ignore it. Um, and we watch Foot- and, and tens of millions of people watch it no matter what. You know, is there ever a point that, and similar to almost boxing, you know, because boxing is brutal in its own nature too. Um, is there ever a time where, the, you know, the brutalities of these combat sports get overlooked again? Because at one point, these sports were mainstream, or at least boxing was, you know. Boxing back in the 80s was watched by 30 million peeper, people on CBS, you know. Like, that shit's insane, you know. Like, it is, I'm just curious, that, like, what happened to society that we deemed it too brutal that, most of the public can't won't watch it, and is there anything that we, that the sports can do to reverse that to get the public to watch it again? I I don't think so. I realize also that MMA will never replace boxing for that for this simple reason we're talking about now. Um, it's just a it's a sophistication that boxing has that a lower you can watch a lower level of undercard with you know, some prospects and it could be boring and it could be this, that, or the other, or it could be two guys just going in there, you know, a uh, Vargas Salido type guys. It's just different. There's something different about it. Um, like each shot in MMA, you, it's like fighting, man. It's really like a fight. You Like a jab, you can see a guy's face change after one jab. You know what I mean? You can see, like, damage after a jab because you're punching a dude in the face simply. You know, and it's not like boxing where it's like, oh, you hear the sound of the glove and the the flush hit and you might see sweat come off. No. You know, after about five or six good solid jabs, the guy's face is busted up. 
you know, and for that reason alone, I just think it'll never go mainstream. And to answer your question, do we ignore it? I think in MMA, a great deal is being ignored. Why? I'm not sure. Like I said, I feel like boxing feels far more officiated. Um, how you let guys get kicked in the head and then come back two months later, uh, that can't be right. In football, if a guy gets woozy, not not knocked out, he gets woozy. They have on plenty of protected gear that's been tested. If a guy's woozy and can't answer some questions clearly, he's out for weeks. MMA, a guy can get kicked in his knee in his damn head and knocked out cold, and I don't know what the protocol is for his return. Well, obviously, the both sports are governed by the same commissions. You know that, right? The regulations are the same. Both are governed by the ABC and state commissions. So what, what's the protocol on a guy being viciously knocked out? Like, uh, I think there's an automatic 60-day uh, uh, suspension, medical suspension, if you're knocked out. And I think that's determined on the commission. But I think most commissions have that 60-day automatic if you're knocked out. Um, I've seen uh, some, especially if you get cuts, they add like another like 60 days on top of that. And that's just all that is, is basically go see a doctor. The doctor is the one that determines what your real suspension is. Um, and so, and also and that's, the same football. With boxing. that's the same with boxing too. And also in football, one thing that's not considered in boxing or MMA is concussion. No, you know, no, uh, you know, you, you bring up, but you, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but I really want to, uh, really stick to this point that I think that, uh, not stick to this point, but really point out the thing that you said about football and that comparison that, you know, guys get like a small minor concussions, they're out for weeks. It's a big ordeal. And obviously football's had the whole CTE issue. Um, and they have, you know, unions and fighter associations. So like not fighters, uh, players associations. So like that plays a factor into it, but it's interesting. I never really like really juxtapose how much the NFL treats, concussions compared to how combat sports treats knockouts because a knockout's a concussion even knockdowns are concussion exactly and in the nfl a guy has a helmet on and he's not out cold and so the nfl has gone to great lengths as far as they even fool you to think that people are tackling differently and <laughs> you can't hit you can't hit above the shoulders and um penalties to you know keep players from wanting to yeah like roughing the the quarterback and stuff like that you know the tom brady rule and absolutely and like a guy like troy aikman whose career was ended because too 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 many concussions now in in boxing and mma we don't even consider concussions you know what i mean so it's just you know it's just pretty obvious as far as how how they're being governed and how the um the athletes are being taken care of as far as their brains go, man. And that's unfortunate. Yeah, it is. I know like the UFC has uh, donated a ton of money to the, what is it? The Chicago like concussion Institute. Like that, that I, I think I'm getting it wrong, but the, that big um, CTE Institute that's doing all the studying the NFL and stuff, the UFC uh, signed sort of like a, a deal with them to allow them to test their fighters. Um, so hopefully like, you know, the effects of like guys like Chuck Liddell, uh, Randy Couture, Vandalay Silva, those guys, you know, hopefully they get tested and make sure like they're healthy. Cause I know th- there's a deal in place for that. Um, I hope that continues. And again, you know, it's just, it's really weird that I think that this is just a topic that doesn't get talked about at all. You know, it, it's a topic that. I think that even the fighters themselves don't talk about it. And maybe that's even the the sadder point is that the fighters themselves have no introspection or awareness of what is happening to their bodies. You know, I could, I know like some of them are hyper aware of it, but I think most of them aren't. I mean, yeah, man, we got, uh, we just, um, seen the legend Muhammad Ali rest in peace. And we seen what happened to him. You know, they let him keep taking hellacious left hands from Joe Frazier and keep fighting 10 years after those left hands landed and to the point where he's fighting guys half his age. Now, someone should have pulled the plug on that. 
and eventually someone did pull the plug on a guy like Evander Holyfield. These things have to be done to for the health of the boxers for themselves. If you know, even if they can't make the decision for themselves, someone has to be governing this because this is dangerous, man. And, who is that you know, someone, that, in your opinion? Like, who should that someone be, or that that somebody's? Who's that entity? You know, who should get that power? Should it be sanctioning bodies? Should it be promoters? Should it be well, athletic commissions? Uh, I, I, if we're talking um, like Bellator, it should be a part of the promoters. It should be in in their best interest for the fighters. It should just be a part of the structure. Hey, we we just have a concussion protocol. We have a test that you have to you have to be evaluated until you can get back in the ring. These guys, these are humans. They're not fucking animals. So if the NFL can protect, I think that should be the standard all the way around. If the NFL and they give these guys helmets, and a guy, you know, his eyes are glazed. This guy's out for weeks. But these again, fighters... the, the, the NFL has a players association. That's what guarantees those protections of the athletes. And the promoter for a combat sport, you know, other than boxing with the Muhammad Ali Act, and the Muhammad Ali Act for boxing, let's be honest, hasn't really been effective. Uh, I think that the promoters have no accountability from anyone, really, and it's a capitalistic society, so they're going to make the biggest buck whenever they can. And if that means sending out guys that shouldn't be fighting, uh, they're going to do that. You know, I, I, I think that the system that we have right now will never allow for a benevolent promoter to be a, a, a trend, to, to, for that to be set in stone contract. I, I just don't see it. Well, maybe it should be the sanctioning bodies. Uh, I think that's... Um, an I can see option. that. I can see that, especially with them taking so much more control of like drug testing. Absolutely. And so, if you're going to enforce drug testing, I think you know the safety of you know the brain being evaluated, guys. If you suffer a knockout, you know we can have the knockouts um, kind of categorized as far as how severe the knockout was. If it's one punch, if you were out for this amount of time, however you want to, and we can say, hey. If you suffered a knockout one punch and you were out by the standard, you're out for X amount of time before you can begin any type of activities boxing. And I think, you know, we I'm sure there's study for this, but they don't want the information. There's, it's like you said, it's capitalistic, so we're going to get the money. You know, the guys, you know, the luck in the future, you know. Yeah, completely. And I think that... uh. I I really can't disagree with anything you've said. You know, obviously, you know, I'm a I'm a hardcore fan of MMA, so I put up with the brutality. So, you know, I always there's always times and, and the same in boxing, you know, stuff like Pritchard Cologne happens, you know, and stuff like Nick Blackwell, my towel happens, you know, you almost have to reconsider the fact that you watch these sports. Beca- yeah. Because, you know, you don't get these those types of situations in basketball or baseball. You know, no. you don't, you know, so I think that a a healthy dose of what's the word? I don't know. Self self evaluation of the fans of the sport, the pundits of the sport, the promoters, ev- everybody involved in, in, in combat sports. I think we always need to to uh, look at it, look within when when it comes to these things happening, because we do have the power to change it. We do have a power to make a difference, you know, like. Uh, Pritchard Cologne could have a pension right now if the sport was different. You know, yeah, we could make absolutely. sure that his kids wouldn't have to really worry about their dad ever. But we don't have a system in place, you know. Or, or at least his medical bills are being paid. Yeah, yeah. and now I do know that Al Hammond has been paying for his medical medical bills. And oh, good old Al, good and go, old Al. And uh, I, uh, I think Lukey told me that. And so and I know. Um, oh, I think Al Hammond was at his. Uh, bedside in the hospital for like every day for like a month or two um yeah yeah so i you know i know a lot of people shit on al but man that's when you talk about benevolent promoter looking out for his fighter that's a good case of it and i and i i do know that uh he's going to help out cologne's family a lot in that situation so that's something to um sort of look at as an example for i think every promoter you know that you know aram loffler Hearn, Warren, all you motherfuckers, you know, like, 
You guys need to take care of your guys because you guys, make, your your fighters make the sport at the end of the day, and they put their lives on the line. And you know, we don't we, we always forget about the brutality because we love the sport, but that brutality is there. And any second, any fight, uh, something serious could happen, and something tragic could happen. Yeah, man, it's always so interesting to me, and and I go back and forth with myself. As a boxing fan, we like it's 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 amazed me like you know a lot of guys on Twitter we get into those those debates with them those arguments more so where it's what like guys? what guys uh, who are we who was it today we had Montero the guys from Tale of the Tape a bunch of, <laughs> a bunch of other dickheads see, see Montero in wasn't bad though like in like mad respect for Montero in all honesty like. At least he, I think, addresses people like us, people that have that different side of the argument in a more polite way. Yeah, and and that's why I respect him because a lot of times I'm kind of – I'm not going at his throat, but I'm definitely – Yeah, you were, kind of coming, you were going hard at him. Like, a, like it was either today or yesterday. You were going pretty hard at him. It was pretty good. I, I just asked him uh, no video on the um, – the judgment on the Golden Boy case, <laughs> because you fucking do videos about every goddamn thing else. So why we can't get a video about that? It seems fitting. I'm sure if Golden Boy had won they three hundred million dollars, we'd have got a video. Absolutely. But, but this shit swept under the rug. Everybody's like, you know, let's move on. It's bullshit. It's tired. Shit something. happens, man. They like, you know, this bullshit is tiresome. Let's move on. Who cares? Yeah, I bet you want to move on. But see, my thing was, I don't give a fuck about Al. You know, I don't give a shit about no, Al. No, it my could be thing, anyone in that position. My thing was this the whole time. Why are we complaining about more boxing again? Uh, explain that to me. And then, so, what, the, what these fuckheads start doing is start talking about the market and fucking... Like, and how he's saturating a, the market and he's ruining the market. The market like, can't, as, can't sustain it. What the fuck does that, what does that mean? The market can't sustain it. And I'm like, as a fan, why do I give a fuck about that again? <laughs> like, why do I care about the market? Like, dude, give me fights. You know what I mean? That's really all I care about. Is is that not sophisticated enough? Is that too simple? And think about, think about all the fights we're getting in this like the first like four or six months of this year for, on PBC side and Showtime, like they're all quality and yeah. the entire card is quality too. And even like cards like um the Robert Easter, who's he fighting or uh, Ortiz or Cruz, some guy, um, it, Rashid Warren's on that card, you know, like I don't know. And I don't know how you can't as a fan, want to see Robert Easter Jr. And Rashid Warren on the same card. And so where where what really got their panties in a bunch was when I asked, you know, what amazes me is that you guys are upset about how much the guys who actually get punched in the face for a living run all these miles by themselves. This is not a team sport. There's nobody fucking clapping it up with you and making cheers and shit. You guys are mad because how much they get paid. I never heard nobody ask why do the promoters get paid so much? You know, when Mayweather and them put on them fights at at in, at the Mandalay and the MGM, the fucking casinos making money hand over the fist. The promoters are making money. The merchandisers are making money. The People TV networks. Making, TV networks. Pay per view companies. Money. But the guy, it's all the the guys that it's all for. The guys who at the end of the day are getting punched should not make money. What, think about, think about this for a second. Think about this very quickly. 50%, automatically 50% of all pay-per-view revenue goes towards the pay-per-view company. And they don't so, they don't add anything to the production. They don't add anything to the fights. They're just a fee, basically, for you to have pay-per-view. And imagine if that was 25% or 20 or 10 or 15%. You know, a little fee yes. to, to have pay per view. Imagine all the extra millions of dollars. Imagine, uh, think about it. Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao. Imagine all the money that those guys got. Double it. Absolutely, man. And I just find it absurd that this this is the argument we have. We have the argument that 
Why is Danny Garcia getting paid so much? Why is this guy getting paid? You know what? They're not paying Danny Garcia any more than they're able to pay him. And think about this. They, if somebody offered you X amount of dollars to do a task and everyone else that you know thought, wow, man, they're, they're paying him a lot for that. Why wouldn't you accept that? That's the American way, dude. I could start a job and be working in five years, another person start the next day making more than me. It's the market. It's how the market goes. So that's just the American fucking way. You get what you can, the most you can for your the services you provide. Supply and demand, we all learned that in economics. I don't understand it, but their reasoning for it is like the market can't sustain it. Um, I don't know. I, I think at the end of the day, where the fighters, the guys we actually love, I don't know why any. It's like you know, don't don't really question Al Heyman. I mean, uh, uh, Al uh, Aram, Bob Aram. Don't really you know question his money. That doesn't feel right. But we can sure question Danny Garcia and Adrian Broner. Why they Daniel pay so Jacobs? Much. Blah blah blah. You know, like. But but let's not ever you know. Bob deserves every cent he's ever gotten and every fighter he's ever thrown to the wolves. And, man, come on. This is a cutthroat game. This game started from cutthroat mobster betting and, you know. I don't know if you saw that tweet I sent and replied to, I forget who it was, out of the tail of the tape uh, shit hole that they are. Uh, I It was that Gene Tun- Turney from 1927 got paid $1 million guaranteed. Do you know how much money that is nowadays? Yeah. $13.5 million guaranteed. So motherfuckers were getting paid that money almost 100 years ago. That's yeah. just been the sport. That, you know, people act like Al's the one that started this. It's this, this weird thing. I, I don't get it. You know, and Montero did a better job of saying it's the mayor of the Pacquiao era. And I think that's a better argument. Uh, it's still a false one. But, you know, the, the, all the hate on PBC saying they're overpaying guys, overpaying guys. Motherfuckers been, pay, been, been, been being paid great forever. For a hundred years, guys been be, being paid millions of dollars. So why are all of a sudden are we upset about it? Or not we, me and you, but just those haters. And, you know, I said it on Twitter that... Because there's an African American man who has more power than any other white promoter right now in boxing, and that scares the fuck out of them. Because the last time that happened was the Don King, and the, and and they didn't like Don King. So that, that's my personal perception on the uh, that that hater wing that just hates PBC and nobody else. You know, it, it, I it's just crazy, man. I, I pisses me well, off. Everybody knows what it is. You know what I mean. I, I, I never understood it. I, I like to just, uh, it's funny to me. I actually find the whole, their whole reasoning for it and why they don't like it. And I find it funny. It's like never before in the history of boxing have, have we seen this type of vitriol towards a freaking promoter, you know, come on, man, come on. What well, what are we talking about here? What do you want me to believe that he's paying fighters too much? That's why you hate him. Uh, what else? What other reason do you want me to believe? Because uh, he's monopolizing the sport. That's... Yeah, yeah, that's why you hate him, right? But you know, you don't you don't hate Bill Gates or you don't hate anyone else who you don't hate Dana you. White in the UFC. They're no, great. you don't hate them. The, the, whatever convenient bullshit they try to lay their hat on, I find it amusing, <laughs> and I just like to. Oh, is that why I like to ask them and act like, oh yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> totally agree totally agree with them and be like yeah man he is fucking like and he's like giving you all this free boxing like who wants all that that's oversaturating us like like get the the the, the best the best is when i hear them say you know i had a bunch of my black friends over watching the fight and you know they hated pbc nobody with black friends (laughs) cites their black friends okay (laughs) that's just the rule so anytime I'm I'm a black friend of yours. Do you be like I'm finna go fuck with my my black friend, Jay? No, I no. That just sounds weird. <laughs> exactly, cause fuck, it's not a thing. It's just it's a friend. A <laughs> you you don't get, go say like I'm gonna go hang with my Japanese friend. Like, you, like it's just it's weird. Like 
for some reason, like, there's just, like, this phrase of, oh, you know, my black friend, my, you know, like, that, that token black friend that you need so you're not racist. And it's like, okay, man, like, I, I see you. I see you. Fuck out of here, man. I, I love hearing the shit, though. I, I'm telling you, it truly amuses me to hear their reasoning for the Heyman hate. It, it, it's like, if, if, if Bob Arum came out and said, top-ranked network, I'm just about to give you guys... Everybody's down to watch these crappy ass fights Oscar's about to have on ESPN. These are about to be. Did you a see the first? Fest. Did you see the first uh, main event for ESPN on with Golden Boy? No, I'm sure it's two little dudes from LA. No, no, it's not. It's uh, Glenn Tapia versus Jason Quigley. Oh fuck! Okay, well, poor Glenn we got Tapia. Quigley showcase. Poor Glenn Tapia, man. That poor bastard. They, he, dude, Oscar fucking hates Glenn Tapia. It must be the reason, right? I mean, how they, is Glenn they fed Tapia... that guy to everyone, man? Is he? Uh, he's not. He's not a gatekeeper. He's not a stepping stone. He's just a guy with with like he has a name that resembles somebody that was a good boxer back in the day. That's it, right? Dude, this is a. And so, l- let's put it out there now. As Oscar is about to give us this series of shit, let's let's wait for the disdain. I want let's all those people, the- all those people who's mad because Heyman just was giving us all these free crappy fights. I want to hear you when on every Friday night or whatever they're gonna do on ESPN with this crappy ass lineup, this crappy ass stable. Of Golden Boy fighters, I want the same. I want to hear it. If it's not good, I want to hear it. You know what's sad is I so wish like Top Rank had something like that because you know like they have it worse in my opinion. Like Top Rank at the lower rungs is dry as a motherfucker, you know. So like that would be even just oh god, I can't wait. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be fantastic. And, and dude, and I'm. I'm unless it's a good uh, main event fight. I'm never going to a Golden Boy card, dude. They think just because they're Mexican, like you can just do whatever the fuck you want because you're in there and it's like a Golden Boy event. Motherfucker, give me some good boxing and stop throwing around T-shirts and with Eddie Gutierrez or whatever the fuck his name running around, dude. Like some kind of fucking DJ all night on a microphone. I, I got, I got the story of. The stories for Golden Boy cards. Me and Santiago are at the Bernard Hopkins Joe Smith Jr. card, right? And that was yeah. like right before Christmas. They had a motherfucking Santa Claus walk around with like one of those like uh, shirt uh, guns that shoots like shirts in the crowd. Yeah, and, that's what they do. And but he was Santa Claus, right? And he was saying like overt like sexual things about women in the crowd. And what's up, mommy? And, ho ho ho. And, and, and he came around like five times, and I was this close. I almost snapped and like went and just beat the shit out of him because it was the most <laughs> annoying fucking thing I've ever heard in my life, dude. I I almost I picked up my chair at one point. And Santiago was like, "No, Matt, calm down, calm down. We can get a drink. It's okay." So I I I went out, had a smoke, you know. Like it was just awful, man. Like it, it was fucking awful. Uh, yeah. I, I and it's funny because like you know, sort of stitching back to the idea of like you know MMA. Um, low level stuff you know you've you've i think seen belasco fights you've you've seen that level you know is that in your opinion more entertaining than the presentation of let's say a bellator fight uh yeah it is you know the thing about a fight man and this this, this is the and, and, and do you include like the production and everything like that as well or do you just mean purely the fights Purely the fights. Okay. The production for me, it's here nor there. You know, I mean, I. That's I, not a factor kinda, for you. No, not really a factor. Um, just the fights. But here's the thing about fighting, and this is should, is kind of the standard overall. And again, I said on a previous podcast of yours, we used a Max Kellerman analogy. <laughs> yep. Uh, somehow I find myself about to use another. So it's like when. Fucking Max, who never blinks his eyes, says... <laughs> never blink. I've never noticed that. Holy shit. Holy shit. He never that blinks his big, eyes. That blue-eyed son of a bitch don't never blink <laughs> his eyes. But um, it's like when he says, if Larry and John were at work and somebody said, 
Larry and John are going to fight in the parking lot at 12. Everybody will go down there and watch Larry and John. That's true. Until somebody gets fucking hit really hard and then the sense of danger sets in in everyone's heart. And then like it's like, oh, wow, that like that could have been could, bad. He could be really hurt. <laughs> a fights a fights are good. And they're you know, when you see a street fight and it's like guys just throwing them and nobody's really connect. It's like, oh, ooh, ah, 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 until it's like crack and then everything goes silent. And see, and that's the thing about to me with MMA it's just the cracks are too frequent. See, in boxing, they're not. You, you At a high level, get a knockout, very few far between. And a lot of TKOs. You know, you just kind yeah. of beat a guy in a submission. Rather than just this knee to the head shit. And, now, now know. <laughs> on that point, very fast, and, you know, switching back to the concussion talk, do you think that prolonged beatings in boxing is the reason why we get more deaths in boxing than we do in MMA? That The fact that we get... You know, that one click knockout, flash knockout in MMA, there's less of that prolonged beating and drumming to the head that we see in boxing because it's actually harder to knock out guys at the high level in boxing or even at the lower level, I would say. It's still hard. You know, I think there's definitely some theory into that. I'm not sure. And, I'm, you know, I'd love to see the numbers on deaths in, you know, in each sport. Um. You know, I just, I, you know, on any given night, it seems like in MMA, you know, a guy's going to get a spinning elbow or some kind of kick to the chin and just go completely out. That can happen at any moment. Um, in boxing, you don't see it. And, and like you said, the overall drumming, most times when we see these uh, travesties in boxing, like a Pritchard Cologne, it is a, um, a long survive beating the guy indoors and then you know suddenly he goes to the hospital he's not feeling well and now he's in a coma so you you could be onto something there i'm not sure though yeah and i i remember when this was a few years back maybe like five or six years this was a real hot topic issue in mma the idea of fighter safety and just and especially comparing it to boxing it was for some reason that just happened about five years ago and I remember there's tons of articles talking about it. And that was a, a theory that was put out there that the idea that prolonged beatings that happen in boxing do just to the nature of boxing uh, and the fact that boxing is only striking. You know, with MMA, you can go an entire fight on the ground without really getting hit. You know, Damian Maya went through three top 10, top 15 welterweights in the span of nine months, and he had combined, he, he sustained, I think it was like 10 strikes. You know, so you Im- imagine that. You go three fights in the top 10. You get all the paychecks, all that shit. You only get hit 10 times out of all those fights. You know, that that can't happen in boxing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it, it, again, like they're different sports, you know, so it's, it's really hard to compare them on that level because of just the nature of the differences there. Um, but I think both sports have issues with, like you said, regulation, officiating, safety. Um, you know, how many times have we seen bad refs give really bad stoppages? You know, and I think that's one of the most brutal things to see is a bad stoppage. Um, especially when you feel like everyone else in the crowd is yelling, stop it, stop it, stop it. And the ref just lets it go on, you know, like and there's something there, the training, the refs, um, I don't know what it is, but you are very right about the fact that I think in MMA especially and in also boxing that the regulations of the sport need to be reformed, need to be evolved, progressed. I don't know what the right word is. Um, regulate it, man. That yeah, you know, like regulate protocol. like every other major sport. You know, yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I've, I've, I've always been in the mindset and this is just me personally, you know, you treat yourself the way you want other, others to treat you, you know? And oh. if and boxing, MMA are niche sports. We are treated as, as niche sports. I think that's because we treat ourselves as a niche sport. We allow our sport to look and act and feel like a niche sport and not mainstream. And if we were to treat ourselves and to act our, like ourselves, to be professional, to be mainstream, we would get the recognition, therefore, of mainstream and of prominence you know 
pop culture, you know, whatever it is. Um, but again, that's probably a topic for a different time. But yeah, man, I, let's talk about the the main event of 170, though. I mean, dude, did you hear about for... all the accusations of it being fixed? No. And but when I say accusations, I mean purely like internet trolls. So like, don't yeah. make. I don't want to make it sound like there's like legitimate like evidence or even like circumstantial evidence to say that it was fixed. But yeah, there was a definitely like internet trolls saying like, "Oh, it was fixed." Uh, when Chael Sonnen had that front headlock, um, there, there, people like slowed down the tape and they're like, oh, look, Tito like tapped Chael, gave him the signal and released the choke. And then, you know, Tito flipped it. Boom. He won, you know, like it was fixed and it, it, that became the biggest storyline out of the fight and surprising fun fact, uh, Bellator and Spike TV came out and said that if you, including DVR numbers, that the main event was viewed by over 2 million people. That's pretty big. Yeah, I can believe it. I can believe it. I, I think uh, it just looked like like a soccer dad versus like some some dude who does CrossFit. <laughs> you know, it looked like some two dudes at a like a freaking um, softball game fighting, but one dude can actually fight. Chael was in there looking flabby, like somebody's dad or something. He looked so bad off of the off the juice. Ah, uh, yeah, he's in there looking like somebody dead. And Tito just, you know, powered him. It was, it was just simply. Tito's a guy. big guy, man. Tito's strong. He, he's, he's a natural heavyweight. In all honesty, like I've been around the guy a lot. The guy is massive. Yeah, his fucking head is like as big as most people's torso, and um, yeah, he just he, he, when when Chael had him in the headlock. He was like, yeah, this is not... He, like, gave some wave to somebody and just like, oh, yeah, okay, let me get up out of here. And then, like he said, Chael, he knew Chael didn't want him to be on top of him. He knew he wasn't going to stand for that, so he gave up his back. And then, even when he couldn't get his neck, Chael, it was still too fucking tight for him. And he cashed out. Simple as that. Yeah, I... It's funny, because I think that the main event just sucked. I, it, I, 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 I honestly was not interested in the main event. I was really interested in the co-main event, and that delivered completely. Completely. That that double flying knee was beautiful. Oh, god! And that cut, the cut on Brandon Ward's face from that knee. Now that's scary, man. It looked like a fucking hole in his head. Yeah, it got stitched up pretty nice. I saw the sit job afterwards on Instagram because he posted it. Um, his, you know, he's looking pretty good. All right. Now let's talk about this, Matt. <laughs> now, I'm worried. Now you got, you got mad at me because I said, who was in that fight? Who was the second fight? Where, now let's, Ooh, let's discuss it. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you want to discuss why I was mad at you or do you just want to discuss no, how shitty the fight I'm was? A, I'm going to break it down. Now, I, I, I wasn't even now, mad at you. That's what's the, best the guy's, part. what's the guy's names? Ah, shit. What fight was that? Was that the Sanchez? It was like a, a no, Mexican that, guy. The the Derek Campos. No, it wasn't. No, the Derek, no, no, no. That was the fight I liked. It was the Manuel Sanchez. Fight. And what's his fucking name? Oh my god! The it was guy, so bad. That was so bad, man. Now Matt got mad. He, Matt was heated at me. I said, "You know what, dude? This looks like rough homosexual sex." Now, I can see how that is disrespectful. It is. But it literally, is disrespectful. L- literally, the dude, li- they were, s- the, it was to the point where one dude was just sitting in the other's lap and they weren't even doing anything to each other. Oh, God, the the one was dude so was like, did not want to let him go for three <laughs> entire rounds. They did not stand up. It was amazing, dude. Like <laughs> it was and, amazing. And he was sitting in his lap and I was like, Well, this is how I've always imagined homosexuals having rough sex. Like, you know, putting each other in headlocks, giving each other a rib shot every now and again while they're getting it on. And and that's what the fuck it was. For th- literally fifteen minutes the guys did not stand up. <sighs> Matt got fucking hot at me. I'm like, look, man, I'm not disrespecting your shit. I'm just saying, this shit is why 
this is why we can't fuck with it, man. Now, I, I enjoy fighting. This is fighting. And I do. Now, Matt said it's entertaining grappling. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on very fast. When I said that, it was about a very, very specific grappling exchange that happened for like five seconds. And then I said in a, in a text, and you can go back, JP, and look at these texts. And I would say, oh, look, it's, it's a shit fight again. You know, like, I, I was very honest about it being awful, that the grappling was awful. And the one time I said, oh, this is an exciting grappling exchange, you just attacked me, man. You were like, <laughs> you are like, no, how dare you say this is exciting? It's fucking homosexual sex. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> I'm like, it was a good reversal. Like, I can't get, I can't get hyped on reversal, like, as somebody that studied grappling and, like, partaked in it for a while. I'm all for submissions. I'm all for some grappling. But, but no, that was, fight was shit. That, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not defending that fight. That fight was utter garbage. I just did not like the the homo erotic, uh, ex, you know, fixation on the fight and how uh, slightly offensive it was. It was clear that the one guy did not want to throw no hands yes. with the Sanchez guy. Yeah, that was very clear. It was like, dude, you're really just going to fucking hold him God, the whole time? Who did he fight? I need, I'm so, going to look that up right now. Cause I, I, now, I in the that. streets, when you fight... Now, that happens when a guy's scared of another guy's hands in the streets. Yeah, that, that happens. happens. So what uh, lookers do, the guys who are watching the fight, what we say is, we break it up and we say, come anew. That means get up and fucking, like, you know, get Come them hands yeah. going again. Because this shit, you guys basically starting to send in each other lap. You know how that get guys get kind of tired. And one guy like, man, let me go, man. And other guys go, like, no, man. man. And they just kind of sitting there. <laughs> like, no. Nah, get your ass up, man. Either you're going to fight, but we ain't doing this gay shit. And so somebody needed to say, Come anew in that situation. Because literally, dude was holding on for dear life. The other dude was like, Oh, Georgie oh, Kawakanian. Was it that fight? The Manuel Sanchez, yeah, Georgie Kawakami? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Fucking Georgie did not want to throw no hands. Yeah. That was so bad. And somebody needed to say, come anew. And it's funny because Georgie's a striker. So, like, that was the weirdest part. Shit. Sanchez was letting him go every chance he got. But Georgie's ass, boy. <laughs> I mean, Georgie was like, hell no. We ain't throwing no hands. And it was like, wow, dude, this is fucking amazing. I've never really seen it to that extent. Like that bad? You've never seen a fight that bad before? Not know. like that, man. Because it was obvious. Like, the dude was like, no, we're not going to, we're not standing up. Dude. I'm going to just fucking hold you. You got to watch. It's uh, Caleb Starnes versus Nate Quarry. It's probably on YouTube. And it's literally three rounds of a guy. And this is back in the UFC, like maybe like a decade ago. Uh, it's uh, a guy literally running away from a guy for three rounds, <laughs> like like yeah. turning his back numerous times and running. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, man. But I, I've never seen a guy just hold that shit. Was like, man, why don't like the ref like tell him to like like unlock and fucking stand up, man? See, like the you ref that? has that power. Like that's just Tell bad me. roughing. Oh shit! They need to like do that more. You, you like the thing is like you see like you have refs that do it more often. You, you like, I I know based on just who the ref is if there's gonna be more stand ups, uh, if the the idea that fouls might get penalized more often, or if he's just gonna let the fouls go. Uh, like every ref's different. Same with boxing. Like you know that. Yeah. 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 All right. Any final thoughts, JP? You know, we we definitely went overtime. You know, I, I thought this was going to be like a 30-minute show. We're almost at an hour, man. This, this was I extra. Know, I'm always long-winded. But <laughs> no, man, I, I, I did enjoy it. You know, I, I enjoyed, you know, I, I like to analyze fights. You know, Tito retired. Now, another thing Tito was doing is he's being like big-time dad. He's like trying to give his sons all the confidence he can give those guys. And so I, I think it's cool. You know, I, I appreciated that about him. He left it in the ring. I think a guy could still fight. Um, but I did enjoy watching the fights, man. The first fight was really good. I thought the the Derek Anderson won the uh, whatever other Anderson it was. I uh, thought Derek, uh, Derek Campos versus... Uh, 
Derek Anderson. Yeah, think it was. the Derricks. Yeah, I thought uh, uh, Derek, tall white kid. See, I uh, thought that fight like, sucked too. I'll be completely honest. I liked honest. it. I, I thought, liked it. Uh, really? From a, oh yeah, from a tactical point. Okay, you know, interesting. I, I, I watch fights through tactic. You know, that's how I view them through. So you have to... You know there's a UFC on Fox card tomorrow, right? Oh, okay. Well, hit I'm, hit I'm that shit to that. record. Okay. Okay, no doubt. I, but yeah, uh, I, I, it was the, the same thing we see a lot. It was Pedraza, Gervonta Davis. It was Santa Cruz, uh, Carl Frampton. It was the tall guy who needs to work off the jab versus the shorter explosive guy. Hmm. And Derek Campos of versus Derek Anderson was that. And in that fight, I think the guy, the smaller explosive guy, got his small explosive shots in and was able to drop Anderson. But overall, Anderson was able to work that jab just enough, in my opinion, to get the win. But it didn't happen. But he fucked dude up. I seen <laughs> some, uh, some shit on Twitter. Dude sitting at, like, the press conference after fight looking like, you know, fucking uh, hunchback of Notre Dame in the face, man. <laughs> oh, Quasi so Noto. All right, JP, give out your uh, social media contact info to the listeners. Uh, at Family First, uh, Heavy Handed J on Twitter. Twitter, Heavy Handed J. Yeah, man. Be sure to check out my boy JP. He's the man. And I am Matthew Hunter. You can check me out at Mixed Combat News on Twitter. And again, if you listen to this show, uh, Mixed Combat Radio, you can find it on YouTube, SoundCloud, Patreon. You can go there to support for the lowest $1 a month. That's only $12 a year. You can help support us, me, JP. You know, hopefully we're going to get to a point where I can pay JP and make sure we do this thing full time. That's the that's the goal. That's the plan. And uh, be sure to go there to support. Check it out on iTunes. Uh, JP, any last wrapping up thoughts before we head out? That's all I got, brother. All right, peace, everyone.